In this video I'm gonna be showing you how you can create this animation. Probably the quality of this animation speaks for itself so I don't really need to hype you up, but obviously this is gonna be an extremely valuable tutorial, especially if you wanna learn 3D editing. So without further ado, let's get straight into breaking down this animation. And also you got all the assets necessary for this tutorial in the description below. So we're back in Sofro, let me just show you the comp settings, if you wanna follow along to a T, I'm gonna hit OK. And actually what we're gonna be creating today was inspired by that picture from Pinterest. So big shout out to Thiago Tavares, if it's his. So first I'm gonna start with creating that ripped paper over here. So let's go ahead and create a new solid. I'm gonna rename it to paper one, then hit enter. And if you wanna have the exact same animation, just use white solid. So what I'm gonna do is grab the pen tool and we're just gonna start creating a mask. I kinda wanna create spikes over here, which are gonna be in random places. I'm gonna close down the mask over here and then right off the bat we're gonna add the effect called rough and edges and what you want to do with this is set border to 60 and then obviously we got some errors over here so we need to make sure to bump up the scale and then we're also gonna bump up the complexity all the way to 10. okay so this is looking good you can always make some adjustments and then we need another paper so i'm gonna duplicate then rename to paper 2 and i'm gonna hit r for this here we want to have it on the opposite side so i'm gonna set rotation to 180 and then I'm gonna double click the mask and we're gonna bring it upwards. Then I'm gonna probably just change it a bit so it's different on the other side. Okay, something like that should do. And then what I'm gonna do is add the text. So just grab the type tool. I'm gonna type in $100. Color's fine for now. I'm gonna probably have it here. And we're also gonna attach it to our paper tool. So grab the pick whip and attach it here. So now what we want to do is grab the bill and drop it on the timeline and now we kind of want to reveal it. So for this I'm going to select both papers and we're going to hit Alt Shift P in order to create keyframes for position. And then I'm going to probably have it a bit more closed down. Just like so. Then we're going to move forward and I'm going to open it up just like that. Okay, this is extremely slow, so we're gonna use F9 in order to ease. Then we're gonna squeeze it in, go to the grab editor, and essentially what you wanna do with this is just create a peak on the left. Okay, pretty good. I'm gonna speed it up. And we're gonna see later on if the timing is right. All right, so we need to introduce some 3D here. So for this, I'm gonna right click, go to new camera, and we're gonna leave 35 millimeter preset. Also, we're gonna use two node camera, and we're gonna hit OK. So I like to keep my camera on the bottom, so I'm gonna drag it here. Then I'm gonna right click, go to new, no object, and this is gonna be our cam controller. So you can rename it to cam control one, and then parent the camera to the cam control one. For clarity, I always like to change the colors for these two. And then what I'm gonna do is turn on the 3D, this is important. Then I'm gonna open up the second view, and what you wanna do is just push away that bill. So I'm gonna grab Z and move it away. And as you can notice, we got some empty area over here. So in order to fix it, all you need to do is just bump up the scale. All right, so now if we go to the cam control one and hit P and we create a keyframe for position and move it forward, we're gonna be able to notice that 3D effect. Check it out. Okay, for now, I'm gonna check out where the movement for the paper is and I'm gonna align these keyframes. I'm gonna probably read the values for that graph and then I'm gonna introduce that graph to these keyframes. So let's apply it and that way we got this effect, which is extremely cool. So now our goal is to prolong the movement. So we're gonna move further away even more. So for this, we need to overlap the keyframes in order to remain the momentum. So just hit Ctrl D for that layer, hit U, delete the last keyframe and parent one to two. So now I'm gonna open up keyframes for these two. And what you wanna do with this is just have it before the movement finishes in the first one. So I'm gonna have it here and then I'm gonna make sure to go backwards like that. Okay, here should be perfect. Now let's go to the graph editor, hit F9 for this. And here I wanna create a sharp peak. So now we need to duplicate the bill and we're gonna drop it on top. So now I'm gonna grab it with Z and get it closer to the camera. You can literally notice it here. I'm gonna probably have it even closer and then I'm gonna decrease the scale. So we kinda wanna fill out the whole frame and still see the whole bill. I'm gonna close it down for now. And what you wanna do with this is basically have it travel across the screen. So we're gonna start from here. So now if I hit P on the keyboard and create a keyframe for position and have it travel while changing X, this is gonna be a good transition. 
but here I also want to apply the graph to this. So what I'm going to do is select both keyframes, hit F9, and before we go to the graph editor, you just want to right click here and separate dimensions. So as you can notice, we got three values and you only want to leave X. So I'm going to delete these two, actually these four keyframes, and we're going to select both keyframes, hit F9, and go to the graph editor. So now here we're in the speed graph and we want to change it to the value graph. And actually if you unclick Y, you're going to be able to see only X. And here my goal is to have it go fast in the beginning, then slow down in the middle and go fast again at the end. So in order to do so, we need to drop it down like that and then have that middle point be quite flat. Just like that. Okay, so this is good, probably too slow, so we're going to speed it up. Okay, I feel like this movement is quite perfect, so we're going to leave it like that. And then we need to adjust the timing. So whenever we got that pushback, that prolonged movement over here, we're going to have the keyframes at this moment. Too late. <laughs> you know what? This is actually insane that we're going to turn this into the final animation. It looks so basic for now, but when we add all the effects, this is going to be fire. Probably one thing I would do is just intensify the movement in the beginning. So I'm going to hit P and we're going to just zoom in. So this build is going to be our transition, so we need to do some work in the background whenever it passes. So I'm just going to grab the bank onto the timeline. And now, as you can notice, we got something else in there. So when it's happening, I'm going to probably make the build disappear, and then we're going to reveal our bank. So now the build is going to turn into the bank. And what we want to do with this is make sure to turn on the 3D. Also, I'm going to move it away just like that, and we're going to scale it up. Probably have the bank like that. And then if we hit P for that layer, we can actually make sure to create another keyframe over here and we're gonna zoom in. So we're gonna do something like that. Then we can also go higher. And let's see what kind of graph would fit here. All right, the mid graph is working really nice here, but I would probably just have it like that. So we're having a rapid movement right when the bill passes. So now we're going to have a fun part. We're going to be creating some movement for the $100 bill. Actually, we need to have it on top for now. And what you want to do is just scale it down and we can actually solo it out so you can see plainly. And I'm going to hit R and Alt click the stopwatch. Now let's type in time asterisk, maybe 20. So that way we're going to have a nice solo rotation movement. And then make sure to actually pre-compose that layer. So we can rename it again to $100. Now we can solo out this again. And what I'm going to add is CC cylinder effect. All right, so that's how it's looking. It's pretty cool because it's reading the 3D camera movement, even though it doesn't have 3D turned on because it's a 3D effect. So what you want to do with this is basically go to rotation and then we're going to keyframe all the values, hit you, move them forward like that. And then honestly, what I'm going to do is just randomly play around with this. All right. So as you can notice, it's starting to look really nice. We're getting some crazy movements over here. Then we can also play around with the final position. And what I'm going to do is select them all, hit F9, go to the graph editor. Okay, so now we want to create a peak on the left and let's see how it looks. I feel like we could actually go into that $100 bill and I'm going to go to rotation and I'll bump up the time. I mean, I'm going to turn it into time as risk 40 like that. I'm going to unsolo out the layer and let's see. <laughs> Bro, this is going to be so good. So now what we want to do with this is basically have it below the bill. And then also I'm going to hit you and we're going to play around with these rotations because I feel like it needs to have a very fast movement in the beginning. So it matches the timing of the movement. Then I would probably just scale it down a bit and have it somewhere here. I feel like this is good and then we need another one so I'm gonna just hit Control D and then hit U and here we need to play around with these values because we want a different movement from the first one. Okay, so we're gonna probably have it somewhere here. So here what I'm gonna do is just have the playback on the last keyframes then select the first set and we're just gonna, I don't know, do something different. Then we're gonna also change Y over here. Okay, wait up. Too similar in the beginning so we're gonna change Z and let's see now. Ooh. Okay, this is starting to look really sick. I can't hold back my excitement. 
Okay, but now we need to take care of the bills right after the transition. So what we could do is actually go to the middle over here and I'm gonna select them both and hit Control Shift D. Okay, so that way we got four of them. We're gonna put them on top here. And what I wanna do with these is actually turn on the 3D. I kinda want them to read the camera better. And actually, you know what? If I hit you, I'm gonna expand these layers to the very beginning and then I'm gonna move them here. So let's see now. Okay, so this is pretty cool, but I feel like we could actually implement position keyframes. Okay, I'm just gonna hit P, P again. I'll probably have this go somewhere here, then maybe behind the camera, and we're gonna do the same thing with this. Let's see now. Okay, we're gonna be looking for that sweet spot for a bit. I'm gonna hit F9 for the keyframes, and here's where the transition finishes, so we're gonna offset it. Okay, that might be good. And then also we're gonna get closer to the bank. So I'm just gonna increase Z. Okay, we're getting there. I'm gonna probably squeeze in the position so it's faster. More. And then also something I'm gonna do is disable the bill for now. And we're gonna have these bills more in the middle. So they are gonna be opening up the way. Ooh, I think that's the look I was going for. I mean, you won't be able to recreate the exact same style. You would have to read every single value to a T, but if you just play around with this long enough, you're gonna get a good look. All right, I think we might leave it at that and we're gonna proceed to another thing. So now, actually, before I forget, we're gonna go into one of the precoms over here and then we're gonna add curves. Okay, then we're gonna drag the shadows like that. And let's see. It's gonna be just more intense, it's gonna look better. And actually it's gonna be applied to all of them because every single one of these is leading to that particular precomp. Now is the time to actually make it a bit more moody. So for this, I'm gonna right click, go to new, and we're gonna pick the light. So here you can literally copy my settings and later on we're gonna see if we need some fixing. Okay, already made a lot of difference, but what I wanna do with this is actually make sure that it hits from the top. So I'm gonna drag it upwards like that even more. And then we're gonna play around with orientation. And we kind of wanna hit the paper. I wanna get that spotlight effect. So here we're gonna double click it and I'm gonna change the cone angle. Okay, you can already see that look. That's exactly what I wanted to go for. I'm gonna have it even higher. even higher and then maybe to the side and yeah that's gonna be good some of the stuff disappeared as you can notice here we don't really see the bill at the transition or even the bill behind the paper so i'm just gonna duplicate that light and move it behind so as you can notice we are actually lighting up the paper with the first light and then that bill in the background is lit up with the other light I'm gonna probably go to the second light and intensify it a bit. So we're just gonna bump up the intensity and maybe cone angle. Should be good. And then we're gonna duplicate that light this time. And what I'm gonna do is make sure that it hits our bill that is making the transition. Okay, somewhere here. So we got three lights. You can plainly see it here. All right, so far we got a very moody vibe, which is good, but we need to keep in mind that we turned on the 3D on these two and the light is working on them while on the other two it's not. So I'm gonna actually disable the light for all of these bills. So I'm just gonna select these two and I'm gonna type in accepts and I'm gonna turn it off here. So make sure to turn off accepts lights and it's gonna be fine. Also, we're gonna add another movement this time for the ripped paper. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select these two papers, hit P on the keyboard, and I'm gonna probably create a keyframe right at this position. Then we're gonna move forward and we wanna move one of the papers to the bottom like that to reveal more of the bank. And the other one is gonna go upwards. Now let's go ahead and select these four keyframes and I'm gonna apply F9 again, and I'm gonna go to the graph editor. So here what we wanna do is definitely create a peak on the left. 
So whenever the transition is occurring, we're going to have that sharp movement. Okay, we can even extend it. And let's see now. All right, I think it looks good. If I didn't forget about anything, we might start spicing it up. So first thing I'm going to do is go to the first text over here. And you could apply drop shadow, but I'm going to go with something better, which is Shadow Studio 3. And this is going to give us nice realistic shadow. Also, I'm going to probably just change the color to fully white. And yeah, that's going to be better. Then also what you want to do is go to each of the paper and apply drop shadow effect. So I'm going to add drop shadow just to show you how to do it. So here you bump up the opacity and you bump up the distance a bit maybe. And we're going to bump up the softness. So this is going to give us a nice separation. But instead of that, I'm also going to go with the shadow studio. Okay, very nice and realistic. I'm going to copy this and probably also apply it to the other paper. And here we're going to make it less visible, just like so. Okay, let me just close down that window. And then something that will make this transition a bit better is applying an adjustment layer right below this. So I'm going to create one and then let's rename it to blur and we're going to apply Gaussian blur effect to this. Okay, so I'm going to keyframe blurriness, then hit U and we're going to move it a bit backwards and we're going to bump it up right before the transition happens. Okay, so this is nice effect. Then I'm going to copy these keyframes, paste them here, and we're also going to have that blurry look over here. But we need to make sure to time reverse these keyframes. So it goes from the blurry to sharp. So let's move it a bit. So we got a little bit of blur and then it's getting sharp. And then what we could do with the bill is actually make it a bit brighter and we're going to do it with Spotlight 2. So I'm going to open up properties, go to light options and we're going to bump up intensity and this should do the job. And as for the final touch, we're going to add BCC halftone from Boris FX, but some of you might not have it. So I'll just recommend creating a new adjustment layer on top and adding Lumetri color. And this is also going to make it look better if you just drag the shadows towards the blues and decrease them a bit. Bro, this is looking fire. And then maybe you could bump up the highlights. Actually, this looks good. Maybe I should leave it together with the halftone effect. So we're just gonna rename it, Lumetri Color. And then we're gonna create a new adjustment layer and I'm gonna rename it to halftone. Let's add BCC halftone effect. And from this, we're only gonna change the color scheme to RGB. This looks so good with that halftone effect. I'm just gonna disable Lumetri color. Hmm. We might actually stick with this. Yeah, this is looking fire. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is just turn on the motion blur. So make sure to turn it on on everything that has 3D. Actually, just turn it on on everything just in case. And let's see our final result. We just need to let it load. Bro, this is so good. I'm actually glad that I spent some time on these two because together with the motion blur, it looks so good when they are opening up the next scene. I'll probably recommend adding some posterized time on top, but I'm gonna go easy on you today. So let's wrap it up. Here we got the final result. And honestly, we haven't had the proper 3D editing in a while. So I feel like it was a nice comeback. That being said, you can check out the video on the screen or you can check out my store with premium assets. And yeah, let's wrap it up here. Cheers, guys.